Hi, um, in what I think is going to be our last tutorial for Chapter 9, we're going to look at doing a regression of the returns of a specific stock, in this example Whole Foods, against the returns of the S&P 500. And we choose the S&P 500 because it's a good um, overall measure of the movement of the entire stock market. I mean, it gives us an idea of what the stock market as a whole returns. One thing I want to tell you first is that in the text, it says that SPX is the ticker symbol for the S&P 500, but that's not true. Um, I put it in the homework, but then when I was creating the key, I plugged it in and I realized, oh, that's some um, electrical or engineering company. So the actual ticker symbol is GSPX. That's the one that you're going to want to use uh, from here on out as our S&P 500 symbol. So coming into this, what I've done is I have brought over two years of monthly data from March of 2011. Um, well, actually, I don't need that first year. I'm going to delete that really quickly. I want to start at April 1st, 2011 and go to March 1st, 2013. And what I need to do here is I start by calculating my returns. I'm going to calculate them first for the S&P 500 and then I'm going to pull it over to calculate Whole Foods. So if you set this up right, you only have to actually enter the formula once. So you say that my return, or that your return, is equal to the later value divided by the earlier value minus 1. So in that first month, the S&P 500 lost a little bit. I'll drag it down, and we've got our S&P returns for the whole two years on a month-by-month -month basis, and then I drag it to the right. And that gives us our monthly returns for both companies. So it's really quite quick. So again, click on the cell, calculate the return, new value divided by old value minus 1. Select the cell, grab the handle, drag it down. Then grab the handle, drag it over. And that's all you need to do. So the next thing I want to do is calculate a set of data, some statistics. I want to get my average, I want to get my standard deviation, I want to get my largest gain, my largest loss, and then I'm going to get um, the three uh, line elements that we are looking for in our regression analysis, our slope, our intercept, and our r-squared. So we can have an average return for both stocks. So I'm going to start by looking at my average of my S&P 500, 0.69% monthly return. My standard deviation of those two years of monthly returns is 3.93%. I also want to know what my largest gain and largest loss is, and this is going to help me when I create my scatter plot to know that I have the S&P 500 on the correct axis, because the S&P is always going to go on the X. So my largest gain is going to be the max of these values. And my largest loss is going to be the minimum of these values. So I can see that the largest monthly gain that the S&P 500 had between April 2011 and March 2013 is 10.77%. And the largest loss was a loss of 7.18%. Then I'm going to look at my slope or my regression statistics. I'm going to start with the slope. It helps if you start with an equal sign. Slope. So when you do slope, it wants to know your known y values and your known x values. Your S and P is always your x. So my Whole Foods returns are my y values. I highlight that array, and my S and P are my known x's. I close that with the parentheses and I have my slope, 0.5238. My intercept, I use the intercept function. And the same thing, it wants my known y's and my known x's. And my r squared, the command is rsq for my known y's and my known x's. And before I move on, I'll give you the formulas for those. Okay. 
there we go. And now we can see that our slope is 0.5238, our intercept is 0 0.0133, telling us that the line intercepts the y-axis slightly above the origin, and the r squared is 0.168. I'm going to reduce the number of decimals we have here just to make it seem a little bit more manageable. And now you may think that you need to recalculate the average, the standard deviation, and the largest gain and loss again for Whole Foods, but you don't actually have to do it. You just highlight the ones that you calculated for the S&P and drag it over. And then our formulas show up. So the next step is to plot the S&P returns against Whole Foods returns. And we're going to use that uh, to input a regression line. And then we're going to look at the slope, the intercept, and the R-squared value. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by highlighting all of the data that we want. And then we're going to tell Excel that we want to make a chart. And the type of chart we want to make is a scatter that's a marked scatter. It'll come up. We'll move it out of the way, make it a little bigger so you guys can see. And then I want to explain a couple of things. First is that when you do a regression analysis with the S&P against a stock, you need to have the S&P on the x-axis and then the stock on the y. So the first thing you're going to do is make sure that your S&P is on the x and your stock is on the y. If not, watch the other tutorial about how to swap the axes. So we're going to start by, I like to use this largest gain and loss bit because that helps me figure out what stock is what. So my largest gain on the S&P was 10.77, and on Whole Foods it was 10.42. Those are pretty similar. I'm not going to be able to tell the difference. But as for these losses, there's the loss of negative, there's a loss of 7% and a loss for 11%. That I'll be able to tell. So Whole Foods has that larger loss. So I'm going to look on either of these axes. There's nothing here plotted on the x-axis of 11%. That's great, and there is down here on the y-axis. So I can tell that my Whole Foods returns are plotted on the Y and my S&P are plotted on the X, and that's exactly how I want it to be. If yours are backwards, um, again, check that other tutorial. Then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add a title and I'm going to label my axes. My title is going to be Regressing Whole Foods Returns Against the S&P. 500. If it doesn't give you something the right size, you can either, one, stretch it out if it'll let you, or you can just shrink the font. There we go. Then we're going to label our axes. So we determined that on the y-axis we have Whole Foods. I'm going to move it out of the way. I'm going to try to move it out of the way. I am going to move it out of the way. There we go. And then on the x-axis, we have the S&P 500. I know, you're noticing that that Whole Foods isn't actually out of the way. I'm just going to move it. We're going to get out of the way. There it is. Whew. Much better. So the next step is going to be plotting the regression line. When you plot a regression line, you just click on any one of the data points. They may all highlight, only a few may highlight. It depends on how many are in your series. Um, and when you clicked on them and they're highlighted, these will all light up. Then you're going to right click. You're going to right click and you're going to go down to add trend line. When you click on add trend line, you're going to get a variety of options. You're going to have a linear trend line. But what you want are these options. You want the options where you get display equation on chart and display R squared value on chart. You're going to click both of those because you want to get your R squared and your equation. You'll move these out of the way so that you can read them. And then what you want to do is you want to see to yourself, all right, did I make any mistakes? And you've got a built-in self-checker here. You've got the self-checker that is these values should match these values. So I've got a slope of 0.238, got it. I've got an intercept of 0.0133, I've got it. So you can see the slope of my line, or the equation for my line is y. The Whole Foods return is going to be 0.528 of S&P's return plus 0.0133, otherwise known as roughly 1%. And our R squared values match up. 
but because our r squared value is quite low, only 0.168, um, that tells us that the S&P returns don't control or don't predict that much of the movement in the Whole Foods return. So this is not going to be a very robust line. And looking at it, I wouldn't even be certain if it's statistically significant. But we're going to go for that for right now, and we're going to call it good, uh, because that's the process you're going to use. Um, anyway, happy calculating, of course. If you need anything, send me an email. And if there's another tutorial you'd like to see, or some more explanation that you'd like, feel free to drop me a line. Happy calculating.